got kids, 16, 17, barely even had a job. Prostitute told me somebody, it didn't work out for me. What didn't work out? Put in the fucking application. You apply yourself. That's all it is. Y'all not applying yourself. You're looking at everybody's life because of social media, comparing and contrasting all day, thinking that you're supposed to have more than you're really supposed to. You're 16. You ain't supposed to drive a fucking Bentley. It's 35-year-olds who's still trying to get Bentleys. You think you deserve a Bentley just because you woke up and you're breathing fucking air? You're entitled to it because you're living on Earth? That's not how life works. People work for what they want. It's a reality. Like, <laughs> I can talk. I ain't ready to talk. That's why I said that Tupac shit. See, now you're getting it. <laughs> you can let it out. <laughs> struggling like let's just all be real with each other we some broke motherfuckers how does it feel to be rich fuck it there you go we gonna all get along let's just get you that was my whole thing like how can you make it to be cool to be broke again while somebody knowing that's why i'm screaming how does it feel to be rich like i'm basically telling you i'm poor because i didn't want this conversation on myself to where, where every time you see me i gotta pull up in this I gotta have that i gotta be dressed like this i feel like that's a job trying to keep up like a facade of being rich like now i gotta go buy all these clothes i can't afford and you know what i'm saying like spend money i don't really have trying to just keep this imagery up that i'm just you know flossing and it's like i don't got time for that shit. i feel like people feel like or feel as if money can fix problems you can't fix emotional instability. You can't fix a drug habit. You can't fix somebody not having, you know, responsibility that they should have in them just because you got money. The next Don't Ever Get Twisted is coming out. My next single, Successful, should be dropping this week. The video next week. So we try and get cracking. Successful is just like a, a elaborate description of what happens after How Does It Feel. Now you don't want to see me successful <laughs> because I'm becoming successful. That's just it. It's just a depiction of that. We made the record fuck it up. Then one night I had recorded like nine or ten songs. And why you always hating was a song I fucking hated. And why you just kept asking me, like, what's up? Can I get that song? Can I get that song? And I was like, man, I don't care. Because at first I didn't want to get put it out, period. But then he was just like, can I get the song? Can I get the song? And I gave it to him. And then we ended up swapping. So he gave me fuck it up. And I gave him why you always hating. And then Drake ended up hopping on why you always hating. And that's like kind of how it happened. It was like a swap. Woo. <laughs> I met Drake outside of that. I didn't even meet him when he did that record. He just sent that shit over. He came to my house on some random shit. <laughs> like, I didn't have no furniture or nothing. He just popped up, texted me, like, gonna come through. I didn't think nigga was gonna really come through. Came over like three in the morning. I don't got no furniture. It was just me. It was probably like just a couch in my house, the TV. Me and my brother just sitting there playing Mario Kart, 007. Drake fucking come over. Oh shit, the hell? We just kicked it, talked. He told me he was about to go on tour. Then following summer, he wanted me to come out, I come to my city. That was way before it even happened. He kept his word when he came to my city. He's like, yo, you still want to come out? I, like, I said, I don't got nothing bad to say about the dude. He always keep his word to me. How can you even hate on a person like that? I just feel like he just get misunderstood. Because he's so nice and stuff, like he'll do a lot. And then like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like he keep his word, but sometimes it's not in the timely fashion of which people may want him to do. So it gives him a bad rap. Oh, you fake ass nigga, he this, that, and third. You got to also understand no matter how real that man is, he's the biggest rapper in the world. He may promise you something and honestly want to do it, but forget or get booked to do something and he can't just respond or he don't want to let you down so he may not say nothing. Now you talking shit, so now he probably just ain't gonna fuck with you, period. But he didn't mean no negative intent. That's what I said, like, I feel like he get the bad rap because he's a good dude. I mean, I had fun growing up in Oakland. I feel like I, I got to experience the last leg of the cultures of side shows and house parties and functions and stuff like that. Because now it's so violent, like, it ain't like what it used to be. You know, like even when we started, like the house parties was just starting to end. <laughs> it was like right before everything was getting shot up. The house parties used to crack off in like the 80s and 90s and 70s and shit. <laughs> we couldn't have a lot of house parties in the high shit where I'm from because it's not a lot of houses. We grew up in like apartments and shit. I'm 24, 25, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I got to see like right before house parties stopped. I feel like these kids who like underneath me probably ain't never been to no house party. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit was fun. Like, I feel like that culture is kind of gone. Like, and, you know, in the Bay Area, it's usually like waves of moments. You know what I'm saying? So you got the mob moment, then you got the hyphy movement. Then it came to the punk rock movement, which was the bands and the pack. Then you got back to like the mob movement, which was like DB, the generals, d -Lo's and shit. That was another tackle. Then you had like just the hipster movement, which was HBK. Now it's kind of going back to the player shit because motherfucker like me. 
Because that was a whole nother wave of music too. That's when you had your E-40s and Too Short, Rap Fortes, Tupac's, Digital Undergrounds. That was a player movement. The only one moment I just typically didn't hear what was the mob movement right before the hipster movement because it's like I lost so many friends because of that, that culture. Like you got everybody talking about killing each other and going to the parties and punches, shooting the shit up. Guess what? They're doing the shit now and lost like fucking over 50 to 100 friends due to gun violence because of this perpetuated movement through the music. Like, I don't like that shit. Like, no, I don't agree with it. I won't sit here and tell you that I agree with it. It's just like a cycle of different shit. It always, it always has to change. It's never like a consistency of different demographics all going at once. It's always like, this is what we're doing. We're going hard on it. Like, that's how the baby. I've never done an ecstasy none of that shit in my life. I just be having natural <laughs> energy and turned up. Give me some Drake or something. I don't fucking around because I'm scary. Like you can take one bad trip and never come back. I ain't willing to take that trip. So I'll be like, oh cool. That's why I felt like the, the first wave of high feet was fun. Cause it was like, you know, everybody just getting high, having fun. But I also feel like that was and now you got the recoil. Motherfuckers popping pills all the time. Now you got these slow ass kids. You know what I'm saying? Like they crazy. Ain't got it all because you've been popping ecstasy for so many years, being a drunk. Now you kind of like feel like you ain't got nothing to live for. Same cycle. So you got a bunch of lost souls just in the mix. It was like a give or a take. But I feel like culturally, the positivity was there. Like it was just a bunch of carefree black ghetto motherfuckers having fun. That's it. I feel like a lot of young kids are miserable though, and they don't they look cool. I don't know, it's weird. It's like, I get it. It's like, all you niggas gonna sit lean? All you niggas gonna pop Xanax? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gonna sniff all these pills, all this powder and shit together? Then you wonder why you kind of slow and boring on stage? Like, come on, bro, you're killing yourself. Slow down. It ain't that serious. And then you're so young. Like, why are you a fucking addict? You act like you live life. You're 17. Motherfucker, you ain't even experienced no real problems yet. Imagine waking up with two kids and no money in your pocket and your lights off. That's a problem. I'm not going to condone it or glorify it because I wouldn't want my kids, little cousins, nieces, daughters, nobody, you know what I'm saying, thinking it's okay to just grow up feeling like, oh, my God, everything's going to be fucking perfect. No, it's not peaches and cream. And when it's not, doesn't mean that you have to be fucking upset, especially when you're young. I remember when I was a kid, my uncle made me watch Panther, and I never got it. I never got it. I never got it. I don't know if you ever seen it. It was a movie that came out in, like, 92. And then, like, when I got older, I watched it again. I was like, oh, now I get it. It was too much power in that. They wanted to break up the black community, the unity and the love and shit. So they created the division by putting the drugs in the community. You got a bunch of pretty much crack baby kids, kids raising themselves. Because, like, once our parents was on crack, then you got the kids having kids who don't want to raise the kids. So those parents who once were on crack and on crack, so now they're the grandparents raising these kids who are now rebellious because they feel like nobody loves them, so you got a bunch of heartless motherfuckers in the streets. So <laughs> it's like, how are they gonna survive? Like, 